Hello everyone, Palitub here. Welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. I've been trying to come up with a build for Illidan that will allow him to scale better into the late game. I've been playing him a lot since his changes went through, and I have a lot of success early on and in the middle game. Uh, but once we hit to level 20, if my team is not ahead, like if we don't hit 21st, I have a really, really hard time staying competitive on Illidan and going into fights and being successful on Illidan. So I have a build that I think will work. Assuming, you know, assuming our team works with me. I just tried to record this uh, uh, one more time. I tried to record it just before this. And uh, our team was just all over the place. Like, no synergy whatsoever. So, uh, assuming I can build it up right. Assuming we put ourselves in a position to be ahead of the enemy team. And our team actually knows what the objective is. <laughs> we may just have a little bit of success. All right, ladies and gentlemen, nah, bro. Cording for that magic YouTube money. Uh, <laughs> welcome, welcome to the the map with all the Punishers on it. Uh, we are gonna go for unending hatred at level one. Every minion you kill gives you point zero one attack damage. Every takedown gives you one attack damage. Once you reach 20 attack damage, receive an additional 10 attack damage. I wonder if they could have put more attack damage in one fucking tooltip. You know what I mean? Seriously, though, like... I thought my mount game was slipping recently, but I feel like I avenged myself. Is that a snake between your legs, Illidan, or are you just happy to see me? Uh, we are going to be playing very, very safe in the early game. Uh, Illidan can be very aggressive in the early game, and uh, it'll work out just fine. And normally I am. Oh, we got a spit of friendship here. Well, shit, everybody knows me in this game. It'll go fine. Tychus will dive me really hard trying to kill me throughout every point in the game. And I'll just sit around getting my season marksman stacks. I don't even have to hit anything to get stacks. Look at that. Look at that, 0.1 increase right there. All right, let's dive in on Tychus. We're not going super ham here, not going super ham, but you know, we can at least punish him. That's what you get for being in a game with me. Uh, and other than that, we're just gonna focus on staying in lane and focus on getting stacks because we want this increase as soon as possible. We don't have to be all up in Tychus' face. In fact, Tychus is actually a fantastic counter to Illidan. So we're just gonna be playing really safe. Or at least the old Tychus was a fantastic counter. I don't believe that has changed. But we're just going to be playing really safe. Our Q ability, if you don't know anything about Illidan, is all based around the idea of uh, diving in on a single target, as you just saw. Our W ability is Sweeping Strikes, which is going to allow us to uh, move through enemies. We can stop ourselves from being body blocked. And while we do this, we deal damage as we pass through. And we're also going to increase our attack damage. Once again, very big theme on Illidan. We're going to increase our attack damage by 35% for 3 seconds after we use our W ability. So basically, you want this always to be on cooldown because you're using it whenever you're dealing damage to anything. Really, really important. Whoa! Okay, here comes the drag. Or not. I dodged it. Holy shit. Holy shit, that worked out. Uh, we are going to be picking up. This is this is one of the towns that I, I've uh, kind of adopted as I've been playing more Illidan after the changes. This is friend or foe. Uh, this is going to increase the range of our dive, which that by itself is pretty useful. But it's also going to allow us to dive to ally targets as well, which is important because throughout the majority of the early game, dive will be off of cooldown. Uh, you use your E ability a lot, which is evasion. This just reduces uh, incoming damage by making you immune to basic attacks for the next two and a half seconds. Uh, which again, Tychus can kind of counter just by using his Q. Uh, but you spam that and you spam your W a lot. You only really use your Q to get in front of enemies to apply some pressure. So um, we should be... We should have that off cooldown at nearly all times and be in a pretty good spot. So while the team is finishing that off, which I'm just assuming they can do, I'm going to get this mercenary camp, which Illidan can do at any point in his life. Could, could you just toss nades and get that last four? I was just kind of assuming we had that in the bag, but now that I left, it's not looking too good. Maybe I should have gone back. Uh, maybe they should just kill the minions. We only need two more. Yeah, we got it. Okay. 
So this was a little bit risky. I probably should have stayed with my team and done that. You know, that's the thing. But uh, this will push top pretty hard. And they're already dealing with middle. So really, we should be soaking every lane. Hopefully, Zul's going down to bottom. We should soak every lane and have uh, three people pushing with the with the Punisher here. But it's really not that big of a deal. Tychus and I can just apply a ton of damage up top. So our trait, I kind of already... No, I didn't mention it at all. Our trait allows us to heal every time we auto-attack. And our trait also reduces our cooldowns every time we auto-attack as well by one second. So while evasion may have a 15 second cooldown, uh, it is also something you can easily, easily lower uh, just by hitting stuff. It's, it's really not that hard at all. We are going to go for uh, Thirsting Blade at level 7. Now this one is a little unconventional based on what I've seen everyone else doing, but the idea is that because we're scaling our base attack damage throughout the course of the entire game, we want to get more healing out of our W ability to keep ourselves alive. I have noticed a lot of people going for Dive Grant's block, which is good for survivability too, but don't worry, I have a plan. I have a plan. Hopefully you'll get to see the full thing. We're in a good spot right now. We're not losing already. Every time I've tried to record this this particular build, I've been losing by this point. <laughs> Dude, quick match today is just all over the place. That's what I get for recording on a weekend. Uh, let's try to just body block this Uther. Can we do that? Or Oh god, Tychus is on us. Let's dive back on this Dahaka here. He's going to dive underground, but at least we're in a good spot. Uh, for those of you that uh, want to get into Illidan... Uh, he is an extremely fun character. I think he's one of the best in the whole game. I really do. Uh, you just need to understand that uh, he is very all-in. So when you commit to something, you need to be ready to sit there throughout the entire fight. And that's where the, the hard part of playing Illidan comes in. I mean, mechanically, he's not that hard to understand at all. But uh, he is very committed to these team fights when he does join in on them. Uh, he can have a massive impact on these team fights. don't get me wrong, but if things start to go south, uh, it'll take a lot of time played with the character just to understand, you know, what you can live through, when you should really hard engage. Um, I think Illidan, more so than most other characters, requires you to know the cooldowns of your enemy. So, for instance, if Dahaka's already used his drag and Uther has already used his judgment, his E ability, then I can jump right in and we should be fine. But if those if those circumstances have not been met, uh, then we're in a bit of a predicament. So I know that the shrine is active, but I'm gonna try to get my, my team to level 10. Um, well, if they're just gonna chase me off, I bet I could just grab this really quick. They know I'm down here, so it's kind of like, if they wanna stop me, they can, but I don't think they're going to. Switching back to the minion lane instead to get XP. It's the right thing. I don't want to fuck with Tychus too much because he's Tychus and he can just ch chase after me with his Q ability. But here we go. Hitting level 10. We are going to go for Metamorphosis and use it right now. Metamorphosis gives you a health bonus based on how many people you uh, come out of the ground on top of here. We're going to dive back to our Brightwing with our Q. That talent already paying for itself. Now diving in on Uther with evasion up so we don't take any auto attack damage. The double grab though from Abathur and Dahaka. Abathur with the ultimate evolution and, you know, just Dahaka going in with his grab. That could be problematic. That's a shit ton of crowd control on top of me. So, so they did beat us there, but our Tychus, forever diligent, was able to get the, uh, the Arcane Punisher. Dude, this Arcane Punisher is like poised to get a couple kills here. <laughs> the enemy team, I never, I never told you our team cops, so Tychus, Tahaka, Illidan, Brightwing, Zul, the enemy team, Lili, Abathur, Tahaka, Tychus, Uther. They have uh, a lot of healing to, to, keep their, to keep their team alive, that is for sure. Uh, when you're playing Illidan, it is important to focus on um, getting mercenary camps. Because you can basically do it at any point in the game. Um, if you get Immolation at level 1, you can go jungle at level 1. Like, you can get Bruisers. Now, granted, uh, Mercenary Camps don't spawn in until the 2 minute mark, so you wouldn't be level 1. But I'm just saying, like, you have the, the ability to go in and do that. And you may be looking at this and being like, Pelotop, your hero damage is really low. Yeah, it is, because I've been doing other things. I've been contributing to my team in other ways other than hero damage. And as I mentioned, I'm going to try to play very conservatively in the early game to try to focus on getting these stacks. We're already at 100. We're halfway there at the 8-minute mark. Uh, 
Because once we hit level 20, I want to be able to just surprise them with my utility. Or with my damage burst. But again, we do have to wait for certain conditions to be met. The ultimate evolution on Dahaka was not something I was expecting. So those extra grabs, those extra drags rather, I keep calling it grab, I know. It's going to be hard. Uh, I'm going to try to steal this, but if the enemy team engages, I'm going to disengage real quick. I'm going to disengage really fucking quick. Uh, we can do this with Metamorphosis. Now, the reason I picked Metamorphosis um, is just because it allows you to become more survivable. It allows you to take care of yourself a bit better. And really, that's what we're trying to accomplish here today. Um, this would be a good build for anyone looking to learn Illidan because it increases your survivability. It doesn't really add in very many complex elements. Uh, we're going to be hitting harder throughout the course of the game. We're going to take Metamorphosis to get more health so we can continue to hit harder. And hopefully, just through pure sheer of will, <laughs> determination of will, uh, we're going to be able to just right-click the enemy team down in between all of our W's and E's. So at this level range, uh, we would go for six cents if they had mages. They do not. So we are going to go. We are going to go for nimble defender. Sweeping strike is going to increase our damage resistance for a few seconds. And you've seen how much we can use sweeping strikes if we're constantly auto attacking. So this is pretty much always going to be. We're pretty much always going to take 25% less damage in the middle of a team fight, assuming we aren't crowd controlled until the end of time. Keep in mind, while you are uh, helping out in these objectives, on this map in particular, it does not give you stacks towards your Season Marksman. Um, these count as an objective. They're not actually minions. So if you're trying s just to stack that up and nothing else, keep in mind you will not be doing that. Uh, we are taking a ton of damage here. We're just going to disengage, go to a Sippy Cup. Actually, we don't need to go to a Sippy Cup. We can just come up here and farm some XP, use our Sweeping Strikes, auto-attack some minions, and get a ton of health back. Not the ideal time to leave one of those things, but you know what? That's fine. With this kind of build, we never really have to go back at any point. Um, there's one, two... There we go. I got it. I got it. Let's, uh, let's just meta out. No reason to die there. We cannot use amounts while we're in this metamorphosis stage. So we're just going to walk around. We are going to pick up the upgrade at level 20, though. Or at least that's the plan. We're going to pick up the upgrade and try to keep that metamorphosis active all of the time. And that's another reason I like Metamorphosis over the Hunt. The Hunt can secure kills, don't get me wrong. The stun on the Hunt is so super strong. But... It's even more all-in than the rest of Illidan's kit, which is already incredibly all-in. We are... We're using this build here today to increase our survivability and also increase our flexibility in these team fights. So, for instance, I disengaged with Metamorphosis there instead of engaging. Now, granted, you can use the hunt for that, too. In the right circumstances, like if there's a minion wave up top and you're within range, you can go to that. But that is arguably harder to pull off and less consistent because, you know, minion waves are all over the place. And you may be fighting in an area that's not by a minion wave. Etc, etc, etc. So we're just going to jump in on Tychus here, pop evasion, go in with our W, and just deal that auto attack damage. That sexy auto attack damage. Now we're going to metamorphosis right on top of these guys and hopefully take down Uther. Uh, we were stunned there for a moment, but diving back in, we are not afraid of anything. Uh, we do have a talent to pick up, but I'm not going to do it just yet. Good Drag is going to pull Dahaka underground, and we are going to be able to finish him off. So at this level range, I have had some success with Mark for Death. Now what Mark for Death does is increase your... Basically, it gives you just a bonus pop of damage. It just... It comes out of nowhere. If you dive the same target twice within 10 seconds, all of a sudden they just take like 500 extra damage. It's really good for burst damage, and Illidan's role in the, these days is just chasing down assassins and killing them. Um, I think he is a lot more focused on pinpoint damage rather than AoE damage before. Immolation used to be a gigantic, uh, you know, over time damage output to an entire enemy team because you would just be dancing around AoEing everything down with a uh, with a stronger version of Burning Rage, and uh, it was a ton of damage actually, whether or not you you know you noticed it. 
But now we're going for our Q, which is going to allow us to deal more precision damage on a target as long as we're able to dive them twice within 10 seconds. And as you can see, dive has a fucking no cooldown at all as long as you're actually auto attacking things all right we come in with the shields is going to keep us alive we need to dodge the grab we did we did that metamorphosis right here uh even if we don't fight the metamorphosis is still going to give me a ton of health to live through everything uh, i'm gonna die i was gonna dive to brightwing but then she dived to me oh no okay so we can re-engage here after we get a little bit of healing i think no, I think I'm going to run away from this one. I think I'm going to run away from this one. Instead of fighting this, I'm just going to disengage and get a mercenary camp. Again, we never have to go back with this build. And look how fast we can heal off of just this thing that's on the map. No problem. We can heal off this no problem. Cool. So if there's anything I want to stress with this build, it's that you are in charge of keeping yourself alive. This is a build that should work in any level of play. It should work in Quick Match. It should work in Hero League. It should work uh, in ARAMs. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. I kind of ran out of game types really quick, didn't I? All right, the enemy team is moving in here. We do not have Metamorphosis off cooldown yet, and we are outnumbered running in here. This is a 3v5 right now. Not as bad now that Dahaka's here. We're just going to try to apply a bit of damage to their Lili. Gonna dive to Tychus here. And uh, just get out of his range. All right, Metamorphosis on top of Uther into a sweeping strike means a dead Uther. And we're going to try to just dance around here. We're going to try to live through this, the dive to the minion wave, and we're good. Okay. Unfortunately, I did get my Brightwing killed there. And they are going to get... They are going to get this shrine, no problem. I'm a little overextended, so we're just coming up to get health really quick. And then we're going to fall down to the bottom lane. So I feel like I've been relatively effective since we started going into these fights. Our hero damage is still very low, but we're in it for the late game. We're not in it for the early game damage. How's our stacks coming? We are 11 stacks away from getting that 10 extra auto attack damage for free, which is real nice. Uh, I'm a little afraid to go in here and hit this guy because of the Tychus, but we could pop evasion and just auto attack him and we should be good. We should be good. I'm gonna kill his mine. Boom. Next level play is taking out mines. I typically feel that, you know, a lot of people will benefit just from builds that keep, their self, keep themselves alive. Like my Zero Stress False Stab build, for instance, it's all about just staying alive so you can deal damage. And some people hate the build, they think it's atrocious, but a lot of people like that kind of play style. The ability to, to take care of yourself in the middle of a battlefield is something that I don't think should be understated. If you're dead, you're not dealing any damage. Okay, there we go. So we're going to get this pushing. I'm going to join in on this team fight. Going in right on top of that Poison Nova. I'm going to try to focus down this Tychus here in the back. It's not going to be the easiest thing in the whole world. He's fucking fast. And he has two healers with him now. So yeah, we are dead. We are D-E-D -E -D dead. Really, really hard to do any meaningful damage to this team when they have two supports keeping their only damage dealer alive. <laughs> really hard. But you know what? I think we're going to be okay. The enemy team is level 20, and I've mentioned that this is where I start to have issues with Illidan. When we hit the late game, when we hit the last talent tier, and we're not ahead, this is where he starts to fall behind, I feel like. This is where he runs into a lot of trouble. This is a 3v5. 3v5. Don't fight those. All right, the enemy team is going to get this middle fort. It's not a big deal. What did that middle fort ever do for us? Nothing. It did nothing for us. Uh, I think we are, you know, we're in a decent spot. Dude slipped me the tongue. Shit, man. Shit, man. Call the police. <laughs> uh, how are we on stacks? Did we make it? No, we're four away. Okay, I'm going to go kill four minions and we can watch my damage just skyrocket. We can watch it just skyrocket. We are not going to have Tychus at the beginning of this. So here we go. Duh, duh, duh. We're doing 148 without sweeping strike. Now we are doing 194. How does that work? I thought it was supposed to be 10. Whatever. 
Uh, with Sweeping Strike, of course, that damage will continue to go up. We're still fighting things that we're outnumbered in. I'm diving in on Tychus. I'm trying to deal that damage. I'm trying to deal the Tychus damage. He has fucking Divine Shield. Motherfucking Divine Shield. We have to, to stop fighting when we're outnumbered. For real. I wasn't there in that fight. I was middle, but they engaged anyway. Or they were engaged upon. I don't know. I wasn't... I didn't see it. So the enemy team is going to get this next Punisher. Get to level 20. ASAP. We want to have at least the same tier of heroics to fight them when they do engage with this thing. So we just need to prepare for that. We are now on the back foot because of all the survivability they're giving to their Tychus. But I think we can come back no problem. I think we can come back no problem. <sighs> okay. So it looks like... Looks like we will hit 20. And this thing is going to push the middle lane. Middle lane's looking healthy. Okay. So level 20, instead of going for Nexus Blades, what I'm going to do instead is go for a Demonic Form. This is permanently going to give us our Metamorphosis Form. And it's going to increase our attack speed by 20%. Uh, and it's going to also give us a Relentless. So while the enemy team does have a fair bit of crowd control, we are now going to become a little bit immune to that. I do need... Uh, to land some auto attacks here to get myself ready for that, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and sippy cup and then just attack this guy as much as we can, which is not a lot. Which is not a lot right now. 20 seconds on meta. Oh, this is getting sketchy. This is getting sketchy. They're moving in with a vengeance. Uh, looks like we just lost our Zul. We can fight under the core. That's fine. Nothing wrong with fighting under a core. Oh, man. What a push. What a push from the enemy team. Okay. So we're fine. That won't kill the core. We're good. Uh, we are going to need to do something about this Tychus, though. Like, for real. For realsies. Uh, I do not think they will be able to kill the core here, so we're fine. All right. Lily's down. I'm diving in. I'm just going to focus their Uther because he's an easy fucking target. Switching over to Dahaka now. Uh, hopefully Brightwing will be able to keep me alive. I don't know. I don't know. I'm still very confident that they will not be able to kill the core. Very confident. Even with the Abathur, this is technically a 2v4. But the core is not to be fucked with. And remember, we have this permanent metamorphosis now. So the idea is, now all of our attack speed, or all of our attack damage that we've been stacking up, and this survivability that we've been stacking up, is going to greatly benefit from the attack speed increase that we have in our arsenal now. At least that's the plan. The Divine Shield coming out of all things. Uh, that was messed up. My dive didn't quite do what dive should. All right, diving in on Tychus here. I was hoping we would continue to engage, and it looks like we are. Let's stop him from moving forward. We're going to continue to dive in on him, dealing that burst damage, and finally, we are going to be able to take him down. Now switching over to Uther. He is going to use his stun right away, so we're just going to dive again. 660 burst damage there, and then we dive again for 600 more burst damage, and then we dive again, and now we realize that none of our team is following us at all, and <laughs> we're pretty overextended. Okay, I'm trying to dive to you. Let me dive to you. Let me dive to you. There we go. Thank you. All right, so we should we put on a little bit of aggression there. We did a little bit. Now we can make our way up to the top and make sure we secure this objective. Uh, first things first, I'm going to make sure these catapults don't get to our core. We're going to be just fine. We're going to be just fine. Okay, here we go. They don't have their only damage dealer. We got this. We, we got this. We got got this. Oh my god, typing. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We got it. We were a little late, which is... I don't understand why that happened. But that's fine. That's fine. How's our stacks? We have 24 increased bonus damage plus the 10. That comes in handy a lot for these for this bonus heal we get every time we use our W ability. This is going to come in handy with our increased attack speed increase because we're hitting just as hard but faster now. So we should be healing for more now as well. The enemy team doesn't even look like they're going to try to contest this objective, which I can't say I blame them. If our only damage dealer was dead, I wouldn't come in here. And just like that, we have an objective pushing the top lane. I told you this is a late game build. This is a late game build. Okay. 
So, they're not showing themselves at all. They could either be getting mercenary camps, which is very unlikely, or they're sitting behind their wall ready to go. Or Abathur's just walking out into the middle of nowhere for some reason. What the fuck? Well, we needed that, boys. How does body get over here? <laughs> what the fuck was that? Dude, he just threw the game! Alright, going in on Lily. Here we go. Meta coming out. We're going to increase our health. Switching over to Tychus now that I think I scared his healer. Tychus is under the course, so we're going to be back it up. Hopping over the fort. We're going to be able to get our health back off of... Or, yeah, this is a keep. We're going to be able to get our health back off of the keep in no time. Look at this heal, and then we can re-engage on the enemy team. The zero downtime Illidan build, boys. What you know about it. And now, with our team and the Immortal in hand, we are going to be able to push in here just fine. Just like that. Not bad. Could have probably been better, but it wasn't bad. I'm going to focus the core. We should just be able to outheal the core, and I'm not even kidding. Not even kidding. We can live through this thing, no problem. Just look how fast we're attacking. Pretty ridiculous. And then we meta. Oh, I was going to meta underneath the core so I could pop up at the end. Whew, it was getting a little hairy there for a little bit. Now, I could have increased my hero damage throughout the course of the game by helping out in the team fights a little bit more. But in the early game, with this build in particular, when you're going for Season Marksman in particular, I do think it is very important that you set yourself up for a success. You sit there and you get your stacks and you try to get that extra attack damage as soon as possible. Uh, but that being said, once we got to the late game, I did start to dish out a bit more damage. And while our hero damage is low, you also have to consider that I was able to get mercenary camps at any point. Uh, which allowed us to push lanes passively and have better map presence. So, I think I like it. I need some work still. And it needs to be refined just a little bit more. But, I do think this is one of the best ways to get self-sustain on Illidan in the game right now. So we go Unending Hatred. This is a season Marksman with a quest. Then we go for Friend or Foe, so we're able to dive to friendly targets. Probably the best talent at the tier for just pure survivability. Thirsting Blades. Betrayer's Thirst Healing from basic attacks is increased by 40, or from 40% to 60% while Sweeping Strike damage bonus is active, which is basically all the time. So just keep your W off of like keep it on cooldown you always want to use it the second it's up and just attack things and you'll be healing for more and again this is healing based off of the damage that you're dealing so by increasing our attack damage we're going to be healing for more with this uh, metamorphosis again we're using it as a gap closer we're using it as a health buff and then at level 20 we're using it for the attack speed increase which benefits from our season marksman and our healing stacks is it starting to make sense now if sweeping strike hits an enemy hero you gain two resistance for or you gain resistance for two seconds reducing damage taken by 25 percent so basically uh, you always have 25% damage resistance if you're able to just sit there and auto attack. And then marked for death is what we were using to kind of deal increased damage to a single target just by diving over and over. Your dive is going to have like a five second cooldown if you're able to attack things. So you're just able to use this all of the time on a single target as you're chasing them down. So while our damage wasn't super high... I hope you could see the potential here. I think it has potential. Thank you all for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.